right, so let's talk about NWA Power from March the 23rd, 2021. So we get into the fire back, which is awesome. It's a fantastic song. It fits NWA perfectly. So glad they brought it back. So uh, we are introduced to the new announced team, which features Tim Storm, some other guy, and Velvet Sky. I'm not so sure how I feel about Velvet Sky being the commentator. Her voice was kind of shot too, but <laughs> but um, that was off to it was uh it, it, it was what it was. So the first promo we get is from Strictly Business, which is a which is a stable which consists of Tom Latimer, Mick Aldis, and Camille. I think somebody else is in the stable, uh, but I can't remember who it is. He wasn't sitting there at the time, and um, basically they, they each talked about. Uh, their match at the pay-per-view back for the attack. Latimer is a nut who just kept ranting about how, you know, he had Pope beat and that he was going to beat Pope for the TV title. And then Camille, who in the old NWA power, uh, they they was doing a gimmick with Camille where she didn't talk. She had so much charisma when she didn't talk. When she talks now, she sounds really weird. She sounds really weird. She has a really weird voice and like a weird accent. But um, of course, she's, you know, just say she's going to beat Serena D and win the women's title. Serena D, I believe, is still injured. So that's something. Tom Latimer just kept yelling about Pope and saying that he's going to, how he's going to beat Pope. And then we get Nick Aldis. So Nick Aldis cuts this promo and it's basically, it's, it's a, it's a pretty good promo. He starts talking about, you know, how fight turned out the big butts because he is not only an animal in the, the weight room, he's an animal in the bedroom. And now he's also an animal in the boardroom. So he got fight to, to shout out the big bucks to bring back power every week for us. And that, um, you know, he doesn't really. And when asked about, hey, you know, what do you think about what happened to Trevor Murdoch? He said, oh, well, you know, because Trevor Murdoch got destroyed by uh, Chris Adonis. He's like, look, that as a as a fellow champion, that sucks to see, but I mean, it is what it is. I don't condone that sort of thing, but you know, I, I, it's it's unfortunate. So, um, they was going to participate in a six man tag match, um, later, but um, this was a solid promo. Where Nick Aldis was a solid promo. Latimer is a nut, and Camille is not good. I liked her better when she was mute. Um, the crowd reaction is clearly off camera. It might be people that work there yelling and screaming and stuff because they were really into it. They were just booing the shit out of this segment. <laughs> they took over the segment in some in some case, cases. Um, they were going really hard. Um, the first match was Alex Gracia versus Camille. Uh, Camille is an antelope. Uh, she has very long limbs. Sometimes she looks uh, lost. Uh, she is not uh, she's not as fluid as she should be. I'm not saying that she sucks. What I'm saying is, is she's, they say she's a bodybuilder, former football player, and it shows. She doesn't have the fluidity or the, the agility in her movements that some other women have. She's a little stilted. Um, her, her move style is very, um, she's much like, I think I told her said before, she's kind of like Seamus. Where she just kind of throws like big punches and she's kind of like a bruiser. That's not a bad thing. It's just different. Her neck is really long. That's why I called her an antelope. She's an antelope. It is what it is. Um, the Alex Gracia is someone I've seen pretty much everywhere. I think I've t- every time you turn on your own TV, your fucking TV, Alex Gracia is there. And I, I've seen her on reality wrestling. I saw her on AEW. Um, uh, did I see her in NXT? Uh, was she like a jobber in NXT or something like that? Um, but, um, I've seen her pretty much be a jobber everywhere. (laughs) So, you know, she's, she's out there getting her reps. Um, she got very little offense in here. She basically did some, she did some Lucha stuff early and ended up getting power bombed. Um, and then I like the, the torture rack into the, into the face plant, which, um, Camille did. She did like a torture rack. And then while she was in the torture rack, she pulled her forward. So it was like a flapjack. And that was pretty sweet. Um, so she uh, ended up eating two spears for a pin. And so Alex Gracia loses again. But um, I, I see that there is something there. 
I'm surprised AEW hasn't signed her. I don't know why AEW has so many people come in to these shows and they don't sign them. I mean, it's not like, what does it hurt, really? That's what I want to know. Like, um, Alex Gracia seems to be somebody that um, seems to be well-liked, and she doesn't seem to be too bad. I haven't seen a full match of her because I refuse to watch Dark or Elevation or anything like that. That's just too much wrestling. Um, I already watched too much of this shit. Um, but, you know, she seems to have some skill, some ability. You know, she probably just needs to homestead a little bit. If she could stay in NWA, I would suggest it. You know, get some get some reps. Well, what I mean by stay is, I mean, be a regular. Um, I don't know if NWA has the capacity to, like, be like WWE, where you could sit at home and collect a paycheck and, I'm pretty sure they need you to go out and get better and get paid and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure like, like the top guys are probably well taken care of, but everybody else probably needs to go out and hustle. And that's probably for the best, if we're being honest. So um, Alex Gracia is not bad. Um, I Every time I see her, she is a, she's a little bit better, um, but she never really gets to do that much. Um, you know, so we'll see. We got our next promo. We got Pope. Pope is cutting the promo. So you know what that means. Pope got to do, Pope got to do Dusty. Pope got to do Dusty. So, essentially, Pope called uh, Thomas Latimer a nutcase and said that, you know, um, it, it's unfortunate he didn't get the win, but he had, but he, but he survived. And he says, that's all we got to do is survive. With jobs being lost. <laughs> With lives being lost. We all got to do what we got to do to survive. I'm just like, Pope. <laughs> Pope. Come on, bro. <laughs> I, Pope's always doing dusty. He's always doing dusty. Anyway, um, I, I I did not know this before, but there's a seven for seven rule for the TV title that if you have seven successful defenses, which includes time limit draws, that you get a title shot. You could cash it in for the NWA world title. And so Pope claims that's, you know, says that's exactly what he's going to do that um, after he's going to win these uh, seven matches and then he's going to turn in the title to become the NWA world champion. Um, then uh, Tyrus and Austin Idol shows up. Austin Idol is very loud. He's also probably one of the best promos in the company. But um, basically the, the gist of it is that, you know, what he says is Pope don't matter um, and that. What does matter is that he is now managing Tyrus. So Tyrus is now going to be a regular on NWA and will be managed by Austin Idol, which is fine, I guess. Austin Idol still has a ton of charisma. And uh, why he hasn't been used other in other places, I don't know. Like maybe, did he do something wrong or something? Maybe I ought to look it up. Maybe he just don't want to. But, you know, why he hasn't, like, um, NWA or something like that hasn't been using him is weird. I mean, not NWA, AEW. It's weird. Um, so we had a, a fatal four way for, for a number one contender for the TV title. It was Fred Roster, Matt Cross, Marche Rocket. It was a triple threat match. I'm sorry. It was a triple threat match. Um, Matt Cross is still very short. He's like the the dad of John Silver. He's very short. He's very agile, but he's very, very short. And I remember watching him on Lucha Underground. He didn't seem so short. But um, maybe it's because everybody else on Lucha Underground was short. But Matt Cross is also pretty old. Because Matt Cross was came out of that same class as uh, what's that? What's that? Jay Brown and AEW, um, Jack Evans. All of those guys were sort of like the, the white boy luchadors of the time. And uh, I don't know why Matt Cross is not you know more visible on the national stage. You would think that he would be in um, in Ring of Honor or Impact or something like that. Maybe he just doesn't want to. And because it's weird that a NWA's roster is actually better than impact's roster you know it's it's better you know like i know that some of these people are not you know full time going to be there all the time but uh you know just some of the people that they use on their show is a lot better than what you see on impact i mean on impact you got fucking follow ba i mean here do i know does marche rocket uh matter no not really you know, he doesn't really doesn't really mean anything, but he's not some fat blubbering goof. He's going to go in there, work his match and leave, you know, 
And I, maybe it's because I have lower expectations for NWA because it's not a big character company. Um, but whatever. Anyway, Fred Rossler won the match. Um, he got called Darren Young by uh, Pope, who called him Darren Young, and he corrected himself later. Like, but uh, uh, it was it, this match was not good. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. You know, um, Marche Rock is just come on, <laughs> come on, bro. Um, and Matt Cross, you know, he was not bad, but uh, the right guy won. So Darren Young, aka Fred Roster, won. Mister No Days Off. He's been um he's been he's been killing it. He's been out there doing uh, New Japan. Um, I, I I noticed quite honestly when he became a New Japan regular, Brian Alvarez was start talking about, oh, this guy is amazing. He's so good. It's like, mm-hmm. and that's why I don't take everything these guys say seriously. <laughs> that's why I don't take everything they say seriously. As soon as somebody starts working under the New Japan banner, they're automatically good. Anyway, uh, May Valentine did a um, interview with Slice Boogie, who said a bunch of New York stuff, and um, basically says he got the scars to prove that he was in a real fight. And when May Valentine asked him who did he want to fight or what, who did he have eyes on, he says, "I kind of got eyes on you, baby. What up, though? What do you do? No, no, that's not New York enough. What's New York?" You know, what you mean? What you saying? Nah, that's not New York enough. What's New, what's New York? Give me some New York shit. Um, I kind of got my eyes on you, baby. Know what I'm saying? Know what I mean? You know? Know what I mean? You know? So she was like, um, now it's not the time for that. And I'm just kind of like, this, hmm, May Valentine. Look like a J. Scott's Campbell drawing. Jesus. Um, so the third match was Mike Perro versus Jordan Clearwater. Mike Perro, I just saw him in MLW, so he's not bad. He completely completely wrecked Jordan Clearwater, if we're being honest. Clearwater got some in offense, but not much. Um, I've seen Clearwater in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. I've seen him in New Japan a little bit. And I've seen him uh, wrestle on, what was that show? Uh, well, it, it might have been the United Wrestling Network, those shows. He seems pretty pretty plain. Um, he's a big dude, you know. Is I think he, I remember I remember him being pretty big, probably like six foot, maybe six one. Um, he looks pretty young, uh, but you know he didn't get to do much here. I thought that maybe they'd have brought him in to to do, you know, to be built up. But you know he's just here doing quick jobs and getting destroyed by Mike Perro, who was pretty good. Perro is not bad. Um, he, he's just, he's very big. He's a very big guy. Uh, but he won with the greetings from Asbury Park. I don't know why everybody's using that move now. Every, like, it's like six different versions of the greetings from Asbury Park. Phoenix is using it. Tankman is using it. Perro is using it. There's somebody else using, um, using this move too. I'm trying to remember what I'm talking about here. But that's like three or four right now. It seems like everybody's using this move. But, um, Okay. Pero is not bad. Jordan Clearwater probably just needs a character or, you know, some time to develop. I don't know how old he is, but um, he wasn't, he didn't, he didn't get a lot here. And just like Alex Grassi, I see the guy everywhere, but every time I see him, he never really seems to be doing that much. So um, then we get something that's really bad. Thunder Rosa talking and then Melina talking. And this was not good. This sucked ass so then the rosa basically said oh she had a bad day um and then she lost her belt but she wants it back she had the title she represented the company with honor and that camille discussed her because camille doesn't represent the company with any honor and here comes melina and melina says oh well yeah i've seen that you and you have a, a hard time and you know you lost but you know if you ever need anybody i want to be there for you I want to be there for you. And Thunder Rosa was kind of like, thanks, but, uh, you know, I kind of got this. And Melina was like, no, I just kind of want to be there for you. You know, you need something. You need someone to talk to. You need somebody to hang out with. I'll be there for you. And Thunder Rosa was kind of like, well, you know, I appreciate all that you've done with, you know, the Latinas and, you know, <laughs> carving a path for me. But I don't really need you. And I was like, okay, content was fine. Content, fine. They got where they needed to go. 
But this promo was terrible. It was terrible. It was it was awful. You <laughs> the performance not good. Not good. I mean, they were talking with no conviction, no confidence. You know, Thunder Rosa was, you know, stuttering. There was no confidence. There was no conviction. There was no fire. I didn't, you know, sure what she's saying. There's nothing wrong with what she's saying, but by God, there is, there's no, there's no stick behind what she's saying. And Melina was, you know, kind of flat too, kind of. Um, plus, I don't really like the concept of being quote unquote there for you. I don't even know what that means. I just want to be there for you. I always don't understand. I never understood what that meant. You know, I think that probably was it, was it, um, was it Seinfeld that brought to my attention that people say that? And I don't know what it means. Like, I think it might've been a Elaine thing where she says that I just kind of be there for you. Just be there. And I just don't know what that means. You know, like, okay, you're here now. Like, what does, what does, what does this mean? But obviously we're going to, this going to lead to a Melina Thunderosa feud. Um, that's fine. You know, I think they were kind of doing this before, um, or there was something similar where Melina was, had like a stable of women that she was, there was, uh, she was looking out for the Marty Bell was one of them. I wonder what happened to her anyway. <clears throat> so we're going back to this, which is fine. Um, it, you know, it kind of, it's kind of weird that, you know, Thunder Rosa was half of this really bloody feud in the main event of dynamite and all this type of stuff. And, and now she's behind a paywall, you know, as Britt Baker is being treated like the superstar out of the whole ordeal. Pretty weird. No, pretty weird. Anyway, the main event, um, J.R. Kratos, Aaron Stevens, and Pope versus Nick Aldis, Tom Latimer, and Chris Adonis. This was a solid match. Um, most of this match was Aaron Stevens in the ring getting dominated by the, by the opponents. Of course, the, the announced team was like, oh, I thought you didn't support what happened to Murdoch as, you know, because Chris Adonis was the one who put Murdoch on the shelf. And now um, they're welcoming him into the group. Nick Aldis is. And, uh, you know, they're, <laughs> the people on the commentary was calling him, a, you know, a hypocrite and all that stuff. But the real story didn't even involve the heels. The, heel, the real story was J.R. Kratos yelling at Aaron Stevens that he he's embarrassing himself and that he's getting his ass kicked and, you know, he needs to come on and buckle up and, you know, and Stevens is, you know, occasionally trying to fight back, but he's spending most of the match selling, you know, he's really putting over the heels and he fires up every, every once in a while to fight back in an attempt to, you know, um, you know, show that he's not dead. And then when he ended up finally tagging out, um, he tags out Pope who comes in and pretty much starts having everybody's lunch. And then Pope, <laughs> uh, Pope tags out and Kratos gets in and Kratos is about to hit somebody with a chair. He goes out and he gets a chair and he's about to hit, I, I forget who with the chair and, uh, Aaron Stevens snatches the chair and Kratos is complaining about Stevens snatching the chair and he gets rolled up from behind and pinned a distraction finish somewhere other than WWE. Wow. Wow. WWE cannot have anything to themselves. They, they can't even have the distraction roll up to themselves. Um, this match wasn't bad. It was, it wasn't particularly great. It wasn't bad. Um, it told a decent story throughout. Um, after the match, Kratos and Stevens got into it. They were pushing and shoving and trash talking each other. And that was fine. And Stevens was like, okay, look, we're going to, we're the tag team champions. They are the tag team champions. They just decided, look, you handle your half of the situation. I'm going to handle mine. And that's kind of how we go off the air. So it was okay. It wasn't bad. Um, one out of bad episode of NWA power. Um, enjoyable. You know, it's, it's a short show. They get a lot done in an hour. See, Ring of Honor and NWA, they get a lot done in one hour. And sometimes Raw feels like nothing happened in three hours. And Dynamite, sometimes it feels like nothing happened and it's two hours. And sometimes NXT feels like it's nothing happened either. And it's two weeks. So, um, 
it's a uh, it's an interesting scenario. Um, we'll be covering power again soon. The problem is going to be trying to find a place to put power on a schedule because I I try to do things on a schedule. I try to keep a schedule. Um, now that power is just boom there, and then of course NXT is going to be moving maybe, and Impact is going to be moving maybe. It's going to shuffle a lot of things around. Um, ROH being on line makes it easier to follow. Same thing with MLW. Uh, power being online is fine, but it's behind a paywall. So I'm kind of like, uh, what I'm going to do? I catch it when I catch it. If I can find, if I can catch it live, I'll watch it. If not, then, well, I'm going to try to be pretty regular with it. Um, but you know, I, I, I like to review different wrestling shows. So Especially if I watched it, you know, only smaller, smaller, smaller shows, smaller NWA is probably as small as it gets championship wrestling from Hollywood, OVW, uh, reality of wrestling. I'm not going to follow any of that stuff on my channel. I might talk about it. You know, if I seen something that I think is funny or interesting, I might bring it up, but like following it week to week or whatever, probably not. There's just not enough people interested in, you know, and I was surprised to see that the NWA power back for the attack review did so well as far as people watching it. You know, it's one of the most watched videos in my last couple of weeks. And I was like, I just did it because it was for shits and giggles. But, you know, people were actually interested in what the hell they were doing on that show. So let's keep going. Let's let's see how long people care about power <laughs> before something happens. You know, so um, like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for your time. Send all emails to Mr. Slade, M-R-S-L-L-D-E. 884 uh, at gmail.com. You can um, send cash via the cash app. Um, it would be in the comment section below. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Use the hashtag three count commentaries, and I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah. Yeah.